testing one two three. Testing testing one. Very good morning and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh again uh, to everyone who is here today with us. Uh, today, this is our UM research, Center of Research Sharing Session, Session 3, 2021. And just a little bit of housekeeping rules. Um, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, Prof. Okay, great. Sorry, should always uh, check that before we start any session. Thanks, thanks, Shanti. Right, some just how uh, housekeeping rules. So the session, this session is being recorded, and um, we have put the participants on muted. But however, uh, you can raise your hand or use the hand icon if you'd like to speak and ask questions during the Q and A sessions later. And hopefully, we can have the Q and A sessions at the end of uh, all the speakers after all the speakers have presented their presentations. And um, finally, uh, we will also like to request that all attendees fill up a survey form at the end of this session, right? So just to, to give an introduction, this uh, UM Center of Research sharing session is mainly intended to provide platform for various uh, research centers to be visible, share their experience, expertise and research. And we hope that with this visibility, we can have better collaborations in, uh, for the research outcome or impactful, more impactful research, right? So one of the challenges of being in lockdown is that we don't actually get to see each other. So this is another way or mode or modality uh, that we can actually meet up with using uh, technologies. And I'm sure uh, Dr. Roshidi will talk a little bit more on that, how COVID and how the things that we are having right now um, uh, changes the way we work. Right, so the aim of this sharing session is mainly to promote research centers in UM to the community and to the public to enhance knowledge on the role of research centers, sharing activities and achievements. We would love to hear all the achievements and activities that has been done, as well as building collaboration and synergy links, uh, opportunities, more opportunities among researchers. So today we are very grateful to have uh, four um, researchers who will be sharing their session at uh, their research center. So we have Prof. Ruzdi Abdul Rashid from University of Malaya Center for Addiction Science Studies, or UMCAS. We also have Prof. Sharudin Muhammad uh, from the Center for of Research for Computational Science and Informatics in Biology, Bioindustry, Environment, Agriculture and Healthcare, Crystal. Uh, we also have Dr. Yuan Chunhua from the Center for Transportation Research as well as Dr. Jamila Mohammed from UM Malaysia Japan Research Center. So um, I would like to introduce to you the first speaker we have today. That's uh, Professor, Associate Professor Dr. Rusdi Abu Rashid. He is the Director for University of Malaya Center for Addiction Science Studies, UMCAS. Dr. Rusdi is a graduate of uh, UM uh, MBBS in 1998. 
He continued his master's in psychological medicine in UM, completed his master's degree in 2006. He also received additional training in addiction training course in Melbourne, in Austria, in Korea. Um, oh, wow, we miss all those uh, places that we used to visit, right? <laughs> now that we are all in this new pandemic mode. And he is currently a lecturer in UM and a chief coordinator for UMCAS and coordinator for the substance abuse treatment services in UMMC. He has vast major, uh, experience. Um, he has done pilot addiction treatment program in Malaysia. He is a clinical co-investigator and visiting psychiatrist for pilot methadone program in Pengkalan Cepa Prison, Kota Baru, Malaysia. He is also the clinical co-investigator for prison community link project on harm reduction. And uh, he's a committee member for National Methadone Met Maintenance Program, also the project coordinator for SEDA, uh, Spiritual Enhanced Drug Addiction Rehab Program, um, and a pi project in Araman Mosque uh, in Malaysia. He is also commi committee members and visiting psychiatrists for pilot methadone program in the government drug rehab center and a committee member and visiting psychiatrist for pilot uh, methadone program in aftercare center national anti-drug another uh, from 2007 to 2009 so he has vast uh, experience behind his name and without much further ado i would like to invite prof rusdi um the floor is yours prof rusdi all to you uh, prof i think you're still muted Thank you, Prof. Noran, for very kind uh, introductions of me and also UMCAS. So once again, I would like to uh, also thank for the organizer for inviting me uh, for sharing session with regards to UM Center for Addition Science. So allow me to uh, share my, my slides. So, so University of Malaya Center for Addiction Science is actually now uh, stationed in Level 21, Wisma R&D, UM. Uh, it's funded uh, in year 2009 uh, at the Jalan University, now uh, uh, known as... Uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Rizky, uh, yeah. we can see your slide. Oh, tak jumpa. Tak jumpa. Tak jumpa. Okay, next. Terus ni perlukan organizer untuk share bantu share slide ke? Uh, yes, it's possible. I don't know why uh, it take very long time for. It's okay. Uh, I can share your slide and then give control to you. Hold on, yeah. Okay, okay thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, UMK uh, was founded in year 2009. Uh, at Jalan University or uh, Jalan Profesor Ungu Aziz, uh, uh, just next to UMMC. Uh, initially, we started with uh, sharing this building uh, with the uh, Center of Research in AIDS, Cheria. And since year 2001, we shifted to level 21 with Marani and Simlaya. Okay, next. 
Okay, uh, our missions, eh, uh, mission of UNCAS include to promote research interest. We we also provide uh, uh, consultation services to various agencies related to addition fields. And we provide training and capacity building as well as uh, inform the policy makers, uh, particularly the Ministry of Health on evidence-based uh, evidence approach. Uh, this is an organization chart of UNCAS, uh, as you can see here. Uh, we have uh, uh, nine uh, active members, uh, majority from uh, Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. We also have uh, external members from uh, Dr. Kafi, uh, from general practitioners, as well as uh, members from the University of Malaya uh, Medical Center. So, uh, majority of our work is actually focusing on consultation work, uh, training uh, and teaching, as well as uh, providing uh, uh, services for various agencies. As you, as you can see here, uh, we uh, consulting uh, Ministry of Health, uh, National Anti Drug Agency, uh, Britain Departments. Uh, we are also working with uh, uh, association of uh, general practitioners uh, as well as uh, various NGOs uh, related to addiction fields. Uh, this is some of, of the example of the training program that currently we have done uh, or doing. Uh, as you can see here, uh, with uh, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, National anti drug Agencies, NGPs, as well as uh, we collaboratively work with other universities as well. Uh, at the moment, uh, University Malaya is leading uh, the other universities uh, with regard to addition field. So we sometimes do uh, some training program also to our uh, uh, colleague in other universities as well. Uh, we do also some uh, uh, training program uh, on specific population, for example, uh, uh, addictions uh, NGOs uh, like Pengasi, Sinakasi KL. So we also do some uh, training for orang asli. For example, uh, you know, doing this uh, intervention for alcohol use among orang asli and also the youth groups. So we use a various platform for, for our activities. Yeah? For example, here, talk, workshop, conference, uh, and also um, either bread periodically or, or regular events, uh, which are face-to-face. -face. And current research activities that we conducted in the University of Malaya Center for Education Science, uh, specifically uh, under UM grants. Uh, for example, here, uh, Malaysian Research University Network, uh, uh, together with uh, AMP, uh, Academic Pengajian Islam in Malaya, and as well as PASO, uh, we received about uh, Ringgit Malaysia 400K. And recently, we also been awarded uh, uh, impact oriented interdisciplinary research grant, uh, 280k, uh, with regard to research uh, of uh, alcohol use among orang asli. Um, we also uh, last two years actually get uh, this uh, long term research grant we share with uh, other universities uh, like UKM, UPC. Uh, we got about ringgit Malaysia now, uh, 600k. Uh, the, the topic of the study basically uh, pharmacogenomic study among polysubstance drug users. Uh, also genetic polymorphism uh, and methadone account study, as well as uh, methadones and DEG uh, changes and genetic polymorphism study. Uh, we got the external grant also from Yasa University uh, Malaysia. We share with um, AMP as well as uh, uh, Yayasan uh, uh, under MP uh, Nurita uh, with regard to two projects. Uh, actually, we have this uh, mobile uh, spiritual enhancement drug addiction rehabilitation program. It's actually uh, already been uh, you know, running uh, in, in, in MP Pematang Power area. Uh, we also have this uh, another project where we invented this methadone dispensing machine linked with a central database system. This one is uh, we share with the AMP, uh, Faculty of Engineering. And another uh, project, uh, we received a grant from Ministry of Health 
so uh, industrial uh, uh, pharma inama pharma uh, rct methadone versus natrosine plus study so future research uh, that we uh, currently uh, uh, embark on is actually research on on uh, kratom as well as research on uh, hemp for medicinal use so this ones uh, we are in in the process of getting approval uh, from the ministry of health uh, so it's a very controversial uh, uh, field you know uh, research in hemp for medicinal use and also kratom Platinum is uh, known as a ketum lah in Malaysia. So we cannot run away from doing uh, controversial decisions because drug itself is actually controversial. And this is a list of the other funding that we have at the moment. Uh, okay, uh, another new things that uh, new activities that we are embarked on is actually Empower B40. Uh, this one is uh, in between University of Malaya with the uh, Britain Department and also ADK. Uh, I will go in further detail uh, about this after this. Uh. Okay, uh, these are some of the recent publications that we publish in journals. Um, uh, another list of publications uh, by the members of the uh, List of the uh, IP product uh, uh, that already uh, we got from, from for UM and some awards and also the recognition that we have from for the University of Malaya and okay uh, our future direction is to be the first center in Malaysia to be an institute of what we call the Institute of Addiction Studies and Harm Reduction uh, actually in, in, in communication with uh, Professor Adifa who actually hit uh, the chariya if we can actually combine, we can become an institute of, of harm reduction and addiction medicine, or with the short name as Islam. So we aim to promote uh, and conduct good high impact research, which later can be translated into the clinical practice for the benefit of the patients. Uh, this is another uh, fellowship program, uh, training program that we have done for a few years, uh, at least for the last five years. Uh, fellowship in addiction methods is a two weeks hands on fellowship program. So far, we uh, train about 150 fellows uh, since, sorry, year, year 2011 actually we have started this project. And this project uh, is still ongoing and without fail, every year we conduct uh, one or two uh, sessions. Uh, other training program that we conduct uh, since uh, year 2009 until now that includes uh, MMT course or methadone maintenance therapy uh, course we conduct for uh, agencies like Ministry of Health and also for general practitioners uh, and this is uh, uh, we also conduct a uh, conference uh, we have this what what we call KL nicotine addiction conference uh, uh, almost every two years we conduct and Asia Pacific uh, we also conduct the, the international conference like uh, APSA in year 2009. Uh, APSA stands for uh, Asia Pacific uh, Society on Addiction and also Alcohol uh, Research. Uh, and recently, we also uh, uh, conduct what we call this Mental Health and Addiction Conference 2021. It's been uh, launched by our Dato BC. And also been uh, the keynote uh, speaker is actually uh, YB uh, Nuru Izzah. It's uh, been published uh, uh, in in uh, the Star uh, and as well as uh, Astro event it come out the uh, live news. Now. So we've been attended by almost 200 uh, people online, mainly from the Ministry of Health, uh, ADK general practitioners and also a student from the University of Malaya. Okay, so I would like to share some of the galleries uh, uh, with regard to activities that we carry out in uh, UMCAS. So this uh, KLNAC uh, that we conducted way back in year 2018 actually. Uh, and, uh, Fellowship in Addiction uh, Medicines, uh, this one 
we without fail we actually do it uh, uh, one or two session per year uh, seminar rawatan ketagihan dadah alkohol and nicotine in, in Malaysia uh, fellowship in addiction method is uh, in year 2018 as you can see the the the, the participant here not only locally but also from from outside Malaysia as well uh, mainly for the Middle East uh, we also conduct this uh, holistic obesity interventions uh, since year 2018. We see obesity as part of addiction as well, addiction to the food. Yeah. Uh, scope training um, uh, with regard to uh, you know uh, smoking cessation uh, program, we conduct treatment uh, with uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, KLNAC 2018, uh, uh, this is APSA 2019, uh, it's an international conference. Uh, for, for the first time, we, we conduct in Malaysia uh, in year 2019. And Mental Health Edition Conference, uh, the one that I just mentioned just now, it's actually been carried out almost every two years, and the latest one is actually uh, this year uh, on 27 to uh, 29th of August. It's a methadone maintenance therapy uh, course. Uh, just wanted to highlight the latest project that we have together with uh, Dr. Sayuti from Faculty of Engineering, Dr. Zarina from uh, Faculty of uh, Academy of Penajian Islam in Malaya, uh, as well as Dr. Manum uh, from Science and Science. You am prihatin uh, meningkatkan tarah hidup B40 terpinggir. So as you know, you know, this uh, drug addict, uh, they are actually toxic society. They have difficulties uh, to get job. Uh. Even normal people who actually, uh, you know, don't have, don't involve with drugs, uh, they also got, got problem uh, to, to seek job nowadays because of the COVID-19. So this group of people, they're even worse, 10 times more worse than these uh, people to get job. Uh. So in this project, uh, we actually have already started the project uh, in uh, University of Malaya. Uh, if you have opportunity to go and visit, you can actually go and visit this uh, Sina Kasih, Roma Sina Kasih, just next to College Sembilan, uh, University of Malaya. So we, uh, uh, this Sina Kasih, they occupy the, the, the bungalow house at the number 8, uh, Jalan 8 Sud 16 is where I know mistaken. You can go there, you can see the activities of uh, drug users who actually initially wandering on the street. We actually help them and put them in, in this house. We provide them with job. Huh? Among the job that we provide is uh, 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 we actually uh, teach them how to uh, rear chickens. Uh, also, we teach them how to, to rear ikan keli and they also doing some small business. Huh? Uh, nursery as well as a restaurant. If you want to try nasi lemak, you can go there. Uh, you want to have a kopi in the morning also, you can go there. And now they have just started to to have this what we call uh, um, uh, car wash, car wash project and also polish. So you, you, it's a very good opportunity for us, you know, to, to maybe can co collaborate with uh, other centers as well. Uh, to do studies uh, with regard to these uh, specific populations. And and now uh, we were offered actually uh, by Datuk Wisi uh, to to extend our project uh, uh, through the, what we call this uh, Biotech Research Center, Glam Glammy Jelebu. So we, we were given uh, 10 acres of land uh, as the beginning. And, and we know that uh, UM have 150 acres here. We can success with this, this 10 acres of land. We can prop, we can actually uh, maybe can can request more. So as you can see here, these uh, existing facilities that already been uh, prepared by UM, and we are hoping uh, within this uh, few weeks we we will actually have this uh, uh, project uh, what we call uh, rearing uh, ikan talapia merah. Yeah? So we hope this project uh, we can make money for UM. Uh, Insha'Allah, yeah. uh, we will uh, using uh, the tenaga, uh, I mean the, the human resources from the adjacent uh, prison and also uh, QA service center and the ATK and also prison department. So many of them, they got no jobs. Huh? 
So we invite them to come to this place, uh, and they actually uh, try to uh, you know work here, and and hopefully we can actually produce something here lah, uh, for for EM as well. So uh, I think that's all I, I would like to share with you. So this is our address, uh, and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Rusdi. That was a very wonderful presentation and sharing um, and all the activities that you have been doing for this last few, uh, I mean, since uh, UMCAS was started. Um, maybe we can keep the questions and answers towards the end of the session, if that's OK with you. Yeah, right. you. I would also like to welcome Prof. Saiful Anwar, who is the cluster coordinator today in our session. I see he's here. His name is here, so welcome. Good morning. And um, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, thanks. Thanks for joining in. Um, maybe let's let's uh, move on, but we are actually ahead of time. Uh, Prof. Uh, Sharudin um, in the itinerary uh, is uh, to start at 10 20. Um, yes, let me see. Let me introduce Prof. Sharudin. He's our second speaker, Associate Prof. Uh, Dr. Sharudin Muhammad. He is the head for Center of Research for Computational Science and Informatics in Biology, Bioindustry, Environment, Agriculture, and Healthcare, short uh, known as Crystal. Very wonderful name. Prof. Uh, Sharudin received his Bachelor of Engineering in 1998, Masters in Engineering in 2000 from Japan. And he also successfully completed his uh, Doctor of Engineering degree in uh, Nara Institute of Science and Technology, Japan, and was uh, then appointed uh, as a lecturer here in University of Malaya ever since. Um, he is also a member of the advisory board of Bi My BioInfoNet, so Malaysia Bioinformatics, Bioinformatics Network for 2019 to 2021. And he was elected as vice president of the Malaysian Society of Bioinformatics and Computational Biology for 2018 to 2020 and 2020 to 2022 session. So I would like to uh, welcome Prof. Sharudin, uh, and the floor is yours. Prof, you're still muted, Prof. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Chairperson. Uh, can you? you, you you guys yes, can you can hear you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, assalamu alaikum and good morning. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our research center, Crystal. So I'm going to share the slide first with you. Uh, how to share? Okay. I'm sorry, actually, I can't share you, that. You can't seem to share. Um, uh, maybe, Yana, could you help to share the slides? Yep, it's up. OK, thank you. OK, so actually, I'm going to talk about our center. Uh, the uh, actually, uh, I'm going to talk about the history later. Uh, our center is named uh, Crystal. Uh, can I go to the next slide, please? Or I can control it? Okay. So, officially established uh, in April uh, 2008, the original name was uh, Center of Research for Compet Computational Sciences and, and, and Informatics for Biology, Bioindustry, Environment, Agriculture, and Healthcare, which we have read it into Crystal, which it brings together all the life science-based researcher and computational scientists to work together under uh, the same platform. However, uh, since 2020, actually, we look at the to realign our research core research areas, 
And then from there, uh, we come up with a new name, which is Center of Research in System Biology, Structural Bioinformatics, and Human Digital Imaging, but still using the same uh, crystal name. Okay, And this is actually to encourage uh, researcher who can incorporate in theory, simulation, and exper experiment from multi-resources, multidisciplinary research collaboration. So we will invite all the, the uh, life science-based researcher as well as the computer scientist with the same concept to work together under the same platform. Uh, next, please. Okay, so the vision of our center is to be a world-class interdisciplinary research innovation education and training center in computational bios in computational biosciences and bioinformatics next please and the mission is to provide an up-to-date and state-of-the-art bioinformation infrastructure for the university to promote cr cross disciplinary discipline research in the area of computational biosciences and bioinformatics and to promote excellence in the frontier of science through research um, and public outreach. Next, please. Okay, so the core area after we realign everything, so the core research area for this research center is being organized to be in human digital imaging biology, molecular bioinformatics, system biology, and structural bioinformatics, which is more focused onto this uh, particular aspect. Next, please. Okay, so currently uh, I'm the head of the, the center. Uh, due to the uh, the pandemic that we're having now, we are still uh, not appointing uh, the deputy head for the center yet. Uh, our core research member is Professor Dr. Amir Faisal Marikan, Bin Aljunit Marikan, Prof. Dr. Saad Tayyab, Dr. Sarina Hanim Hamza, Dr. Arpah Abu. Dr. Farahaniza Spandi and Dr. Nikman Adli bin Noor Hashim. So these are the core members. We have a few associate members that is uh, not listed here. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, next, please. Uh, in terms of research activity, this is a, a research activity that been conducted by uh, Professor Dr. Amir Faiza American in uh, Crystal on the 3D bioimaging and surface body scan where he has two projects on that. The first one is on the 3D food scanning technology using the, the machine as shown in the right side. So to scan the 3D of our food and determine the size of the, uh, the food. The, the next one is on the application of 3D whole body scanning technology which is uh, try to measure the size of uh, the body of a person. Uh, next, please. Can I go the next one? Can I? Okay. So uh, based on th that two project, uh, these are a few selected research project. The first one is on the Malaysian Sizing Survey or My Size, which is a nationwide 3D uh, anthropometric study of the physical body size and shape of Malaysian. Actually, uh, this project determined, uh, try to determine the size of uh, Malaysian's uh, body, and then based on that, it can be uh, the output can be used as a uh, to determine the size. Like for example, the size of clothes. And in fact, actually, last week, uh, Prof. Ame has been approached by Uniqlo Japan. Uh, to look at our data on Malaysian population. So it's very interesting project. And then the next project uh, is on Mizu, which is a mobile encyclopedia of the zoo, uh, where um, the project is to uh, have a database of the animal in the zoo and then arrange it uh, and then organize it in, uh, with a QR code so that when when the uh, uh, when you visit uh, Zunagara, you can scan and then get further information regarding the animal that uh, in the zoo. And then another one is on Rimba, which is looking at the uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, especially in education. Next. 
Okay, so this is a uh, some update on the Mizu where uh, actually uh, the the they publish a uh, stem for animal in the zoo and having here you can see that the the QR codes that being generated by the team is in incorporated in the stem. So we, we have this type of facility to help uh, to make the zoo uh, to help the zoo to um, introduce uh, the the animals and everything their habitats and everything lah, the information about the animal next please the next uh, research project uh, this is uh, conducted by dr arpa which is on the uh, bio database and bio digital visualization uh, on ontology base of biological data and also as on uh, craniofacial anthropometry extraction meaning that looking at the face and the features of the face and based on that try to organize uh, something from that okay next um, the next project by dr farah haniza is on system biology looking at the simulation and analysis for prediction and biological insight um, based on the uh, next generation data next uh, another system biology project by Dr. Nickman. This is looking at the uh, anti-cancer agents uh, in ve venoms, where from this they are looking for what are the potential uh, anti-cancer agent that can be covered later for, for further application. The next, please. Uh, another project by Dr. Nickman on molecular bioinformatics, looking at human genomics, where he studied the uh, SNPs genotyping, and also uh, CNV. CNV stands for uh, copy number variation prediction. So these are the projects that have been conducted by Dr. Nickman. Actually, uh, this uh, Dr. Nickman is our uh, latest uh, members in Crystal, so he has a lot of projects with very. Uh, high impact research in this field. Next, please. And other projects, we also uh, conduct uh, research on structural bioinformatics, like for example, looking at the uh, molecular dynamic simulation, where we try to study how does the protein, uh, the, be the molecular behavior of a protein, and based on that, what are the impact on the biological function? So that is uh, on the structure bioinformatics. Uh, the next, please. Oh, uh, showing some uh, uh, photo of the how does the the molecule move? Okay. Um, the next one is on uh, structure, still on structure bioinformatics, where we also study the uh, we also conduct the virtual screening. Which is screening is actually uh, where we analyze a database of drugs and do the docking analysis with the target protein. Based on that, we try to rank the the compound that can be potential drugs for uh, to target the protein. So this is actually uh, been conducted in drug design. So other docking analysis where we try to dock for this is actually the docking analysis of a compound to the protein. Based on this docking analysis, we are going to uh, study uh, the interaction and then based on that, the potential of the compound to be a drug for the protein. Or we also study in terms of the uh, transportation of the drug by uh, transport proteins such as albumin. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, we also conduct other bioinformatics and computational biology projects, such as uh, doing for the uh, whole genome analysis uh, for pro prokaryotes, for humans. For humans, we uh, conduct for two uh, base, which is reference base and de novo base. We also conduct the whole exome analysis. Actually, we currently we are running a project collaboration project with Institute of Medical Research to study the rare disease uh, in, um, in patient 
using whole exome analysis where we have a lot of um, wonderful outcome, a very impactful outcome from that analysis uh, that helps the institute to diagnose a patient, especially for the rare cases. We also conduct RNA sequence uh, data analysis, uh, evolutionary trace analysis, and also codon usage bias analysis as a research project in our center. Okay, next, please. Next, okay. So these are a few facilities in our center. We have a data center, which is uh, consisting of the... Hello? Uh, consisting of the hello okay okay consisting of the uh, big uh, center cluster system where we have our all the data inside the this data center we also have a uh, experimental uh, uh, prof you're muted prof Okay, so yes. I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Somehow I guess. <laughs> so this is the facility of uh, our center. We have a uh, database uh, infrastructure and, and data center, uh, the Blade Center cluster system where all our data have been stored there. So we are also running the analysis, some of the analysis there. Uh, we do have uh, con uh, conducting uh, uh, wet lab uh, experiments, especially on PCR, uh, DNA extraction. Uh, we have 3D bioimaging facility, uh, such as the whole body scanner, the foot scanners. And we also have one uh, mobile research vehicle, which is uh, to transport all our researcher throughout the, the field trips and everything. Okay, next please. Okay, so these are a few of our activity. So we have, we are conducting a workshop series uh, since actually 2015, uh, actively conducting in various uh, topics such as next generation sequence data analysis, whole genome analysis on prokaryotes as well as on the human's uh, genome. We are also conducting a whole exome analysis, RNA-seq data analysis, uh, human transcriptome data analysis, molecular modeling and dynamics, as well as the molecular simulation on protein ligand interaction. Uh, however, unfortunately, uh, since last year, we are not able to conduct the workshop because it is a very, uh, we still cannot figure out to conduct the workshop uh, online version because of the uh, complexity of the workshop that we are running. So due to that, uh, 2020, we are not able to conduct any workshop for Crystal Workshop Series. Okay, next. Uh, we also conducting uh, summer school. Uh, actually, we have a bioinformatics program summer school, which uh, having two paths. One is on the NGS data analysis another one on structural bioinformatics but unfortunately last year as uh, last year due to the pandemic again uh we did have a few participants but at the end of the you know uh they 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 are not able to participate in that and so we did not uh proceed with the summer school last year uh and this year also so we hope that uh, by next year we will able to uh, uh, conduct the uh, summer school as well as the um, workshops. Uh, we also have internship program, but internship program is actually uh, project based, so meaning that uh, the uh, the participant will uh, apply to the uh, the PI and then our researcher are going to assign them based on the project. Okay, next. Uh, we actively conducting a scientific seminar. Actually, uh, in 2019, we have uh, Prof. Gregory Butler from Con Concordia University, Canada. 
uh, delivering his talk on this uh, project, very wonderful projects on the uh, host and microbiome interactions. Uh, last year, we have uh, Dr. Filippo Priski from the University of Essex, uh, UK, um, talk, giving talk of, in the targeting of cancer. So these are among the activity uh, that we conducted. Next, please. So we have a lot of collaboration, uh, research collaboration with local and private university, uh, local for the local. Uh, for the abroad, we are conducting, uh, we are having collaboration with John Hawking University, Fuku University uh, from Japan, and also Tokushima University in Japan. We also having a lot of collaboration with local research institutes such as uh, Institute of Medical Research, Malaysian Palm Oil Board, uh, Malaysian Agriculture Research and Development Institute, Mardi, and as well as our Forest Research Institute, uh, Malaysia Fring. And we are currently having, uh, this is our latest uh, industry collaboration with My Life Coach and Rembrandt, where we are trying to uh, 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 analyze the human uh, genetic data uh, to provide a personalized medicine for for the public usage. Next, um, okay. So these are uh, uh, some service and consultation activity at Crystal, where we are conducting a genomic data analysis uh, such as the NGS assembly and alignment, uh, the prokaryotic de novo and reference base, eukaryotic reference base, and the whole exome for human. We also having uh, services for transcriptomic data analysis such as RNA-6 sequence assembly, microarray data analysis. For structural bioinformatics, we have uh, protein 3D visualization and refinement uh, services, homology modeling, uh, active or binding site prediction, molecular docking, virtual screening, and molecular dynamic simulation. In terms of molecular sequence analysis and biostats, we have uh, we are conducting uh, pairwise sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment, uh, molecular phylogenetic trees, evolutionary trees analysis, codon bias analysis, and descriptive and inferential statistics. Uh, we also have uh, system biology services for biological pathway and gene-gene interaction. And currently, actually, uh, we are having a next generation sequencing uh, service uh, under the Illumina MySeq uh, platform. Okay, I think that's all for my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Sharudin. That was a wonderful presentation, and I can see a lot of challenges that all of us face during the pandemic, where things that we are uh, used to do or we would love to do face-to-face uh, -face had to be either changed to online method or some even online is also not very um, conducive in a sense that uh, it, it can't be, be done the real online that we'd like to like it to have. Um, I, uh, I've got a few questions, but I think I'll reserve that to the end and uh, maybe uh, we'd like to invite the third speaker today. We have um, Dr. Yuan chun -Hua. He is currently the head for Center for Transportation Research. He is the senior lecturer in the Department of Civil Engineering, a registered professional engineer with the Board of Engineers Malaysia and registered professional technologist with the Malaysian Board of Technologies. Behind him, he has more than 15 years of experience in conducting research that focuses on sustainable transport and intelligent transport system and have instilled him with proficient quantitative as well as analytical skills needed for research. He is currently the head of Center for Transportation Research in UM, a research center that provides technical opinion and consultancy services in transport discipline Besides activity involved in R&D projects. So his areas of research are traffic engineering, traffic safety, road user behavior, 
and Sustainable Transport and ITS. Um, without further ado, I would like to hand over to Dr. Yuan Chun Wong. Yes, yes uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Prof. Nora. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but we can't okay. see you. Yeah, yeah. You can't see me. Yes. I already turned on my camera. Can you see me? Um, no, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I think my, my, uh, maybe let me try to, uh, switch on. How about now? Uh, still not yet. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, maybe. Okay, let me try to. Um, I I can't really see you. I let me. It's okay. Maybe if you if you can just share your slide and present, that would also be good. Uh, but I I. I seem to hear that your voice is a bit fading. Okay, how can I? Uh, also, no, la. Dr. Yuan? Uh, not really. It's very faded. Your voice is very faded. The earlier one, the voice was better. Uh, it's just that we can't see you. But I think if you can go back to the, your earlier mic uh, settings, that will be good. And maybe you can just have the presentation. Prof, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, much better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for that. So let me uh share my uh, slides. Okay, Prof, can you see my slide? Prof, can you see my slide? On, uh, mm -hmm. Not really, not yet. Not yet. How about now? No, only the blank screen. Only a blank screen. Hmm. Would you like the cluster to put up the slides for you? Sure, 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 sure. Uh, yeah, please, please, please. Sorry, I think my, my, my internet here in my room got problems. Sorry for that. No worries. Ah, uh, yeah, the slides is up. Okay. Okay, so who is... Okay, all right, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, very good morning to everyone. So uh, I'm Yuan. Uh, I'm from the Department of Civil Engineering uh, in University of Malaya. So uh, actually now today I would like to just uh, introduce uh, about our center. So our center name is a Center for Transportation uh, Research. Okay, next slide, please. So this is uh, what we are going to share today. So first of all, I'm talking about uh, what our centers, uh, the objective, vision, missions, and then I'll introduce our center members and then what we do uh, in our research centers and what actually we, our research activities in the centers and after that, uh, finally it's about our uh, networks and collaboration with others industry uh, next slide please okay so uh yeah this is about i will talk about the overview the vision and mission our research focus and our research objectives uh, in the in the, our research center uh, next slide 
Okay, so actually we are a multidisciplinary research unit, even though I'm from engineering. So even though traffic is, seems people would think traffic is from engineering. No, actually it's not. So actually we have a various discipline, like we have town planner also, they have involved in the uh, doing the, this uh, transport and in traffic uh, design. And also we have transport economics, and also we, we need experts from the statistics and mathematicians that help us to do the analysis, uh, big data analysis, things like that. So our center is based in engineering, but of course our members are from various disciplines, okay? So I think same as the other research centers, our basic activities uh, is uh, supervise the students, doing research, uh, doing consultancy works. So this, it's, just a, it's the same as other research center. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, our vision here is the, to be an excellent research center in transportation related areas. Uh, and then we want to at once, our mission is to at once understanding in transport research uh, and then upgrading our skills, knowledge and best practice. And also we want to connect between the academicians, students, practitioners, and also other stakeholders. So our research focus is more on you know, sustainable transport system, pavement technology, uh, ITS. Because for your information, uh, transportation engineering, actually we have, uh, this is a big umbrella. Under it, we have different branch. We have uh, traffic, we have uh, pavement, we have highway, and also we have science sources like study the uh, study, uh, travel behavior, human behavior, and also we have some questionnaire studies to uh, to get the data respondent, uh, respond from the respondents. So these are the different areas that we will do under this uh, transport engineering. Even though it's still engineering work, but it's, uh, we can generally say that it's a transportation system. Okay, uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, our objectives, our research center objective, what we do. Actually, we, we act as a center to conduct you know, research projects, supervise our research uh, uh, postgraduate students in UM. And also we provide and offer professional consultancy service to both public and private sectors. And we establish uh, and enhance the linkages with the industry and also other uh, research institutions uh, locally and abroad. And we identify the future directions of what the new design, new techniques that involve in the, this transport system, infra designs, uh, things like that. But of course, this one we have to work together closely with the policymakers, with the, our local authorities, with the minist uh, ministries. And then finally, is to introduce the appropriate state of art technologies and recommended ways, the means which suitable technologies could be incorporated in the transport system. So this is about the ITS, like intelligent transport system. So this is not purely on the, the, the engine itself. It's we involve the use of the technology, the ICT. So that's why we also have expert from EE background, from computer science background. Thank you. Next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, next I would like to introduce uh, our team members, our research center members. Uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, I myself, I'm a, a head of, of the centers. Uh, I'm a traffic guy, <laughs> okay? So our deputy head uh, is a associate professor, Dr. Rosilawati. Uh, she's an urban planning, uh, urban planner. She's from a uh, faculty of big environment. And so we have also another uh, members from the big environment, uh, Dr. Yong Adila. So her area of ex uh, expertise is uh, urban and regional planning. So as I mentioned just before, we under the transportation, we have a pavement, we have highway uh, pavement material and we have highway design. So we have two experts here who are uh, Dr. Mama Rastan on the, on the highway engineering and traffic and transport and also uh, Dr. Suana on the pavement. And of course, since we are dealing with the, 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 the vehicles, the cars, motorized vehicles, so we need to calculate, you know, the carbon emissions to the environment. So of course we need we have to have uh, environment engineers here. So that's why we have a doctor on here. So he's uh, doing uh, EIA, LCA, so this kind of analysis. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, we, we do have uh, doing some structures design, root geometric design, root furniture design. So that's why we also need expert from the structure engineering. So we have a uh, associate professor, Dr. Payam, and we have uh, uh, Dr. Yap and also uh, Dr. Mola. So they are the experts in this discipline. And since just now I mentioned that we are doing uh, something on the ITS because now everything's in the IR 4.0 big data application in transport sector. So that's why we also have the experts who are doing this kind of the work and the projects. So we have an associate professor, Dr. Rafida, uh, from the Faculty of uh, uh, Computer Science. Uh, his, uh, her area of uh, experts is on the mobile network technologies, communications. And also we have a Dr. David Chua uh, from the Electrical Engineering Department. So who do more on the image processing, complete emission and AI. And of course, we have another uh, expert from the Department of Mechanical Engineers, uh, who is uh, Dr. Ezro, who do the on the uh, machine design, 
how we can develop a safe uh, vehicle system. So he's the expert here. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, of course, this is our main people here, our advisors, uh, uh, our retired professor, Dr. Mama Rehan. So he's the founder of this uh, research uh, center. So before that, we are not a research center. We are starting from a transportation research group, I think in the year 90 or 80s, I can't remember. So Prof. Rehan is the founder of this uh, of this transportation research group and then after that we upgrade to the research center so of course we need uh, we still need his advice and guidance here so he's uh you know uh have a many of experience in doing the research not on the research but also the consultancy works also the working with uh, the governments on the uh, drafting the policies uh. so he's our main person here in our research centers okay thank you next slide please yeah, of course, too, uh, we don't forget we have our support team here, even though not many. <laughs> we only have two support staff here. So first, we have our, our research center research officer, Madam Nick Ikishamia, uh, who also helped us in uh, her, her background is all on the urban transport planning and science social. So help us on conducting the research works and uh, or doing the documentation works. And also we have our uh, uh, assistant science officer, uh, Injil Mohamed uh, Izzat, uh, on help us to do the on the highways uh, testing and laboratory work. Okay, so thank you. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is uh, next. I would like to uh, talk about what we do <laughs> in our research center. Thank you. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, this is the main research areas lah, because these are the, you know, we are from the transport sectors, you know, transport uh, research sector. So first, of course, we are, I'm from engineering, so we do the things like work on the traffic and transportation engineering, uh, transportation planning and modeling. OK, ITS, just now I mentioned that, you know, now uh, IR 4.0, we need to have uh, uh, what we call that uh, explore more work on the ITS, sustainable transport, non motorized transport. So this is what we do because we are actually encouraging people not to take more, uh, not to you know make their trip using the motorized car, you know, using the non-motorized uh, transport like walking, cycling. Of course, walking, cycling is just like, you know, as a first and last mile uh, travel. So of course, we will promote, uh, pro uh, encourage people to take more on the public transport. And beside that, also we are doing the research on the, you know, TIA, traffic impact assessment, MRB impact assessment, social impact assessment. And of course, we have uh, to work on the doing the route and highway design, paper materials, studies and research, uh, climate change studies uh, and low carbon mobility studies. So these are generally all what we, we do, our research center members do uh, in, in these areas. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, of course, uh, this one, we have uh, one highway repository, but this is a uh, part under uh, our department and also faculty of engineering. But of course, we as a research centers members and also we are the members of our department. So we are still using these uh, laboratories uh, to conduct our works not only for our teaching, but also, also for our activities in the research centers. So here are the various tests, like many are the, what we call that, the highway, the paper material test. So not only in the risk, uh, we do it for our research uh, project, but also we will, uh, for other outside company, they will, when they want to conduct these uh, tests for their samples, they will can also send their samples here. Lah. So from there, we also, Think can generate some income lah, back to our research center and also to our department. Okay, but of course they will be charged based on the, the type of the test they want to conduct and also the the sample numbers lah. So these are the uh, different uh, tests that we provide or services that we provide in our highway laboratory. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, here are the some of the. Uh, uh, equipment and facilities la, that we have here because uh, even though our lab is not accredited lab, but still we provide some basic and uh, fundamentals tests for the pavement materials. You know, we have uh, some machines, so yeah, like this Yumata machine, I think is uh, about reach near to 1 million, uh, uh, the cost. La. Okay, so we also we have some other machine, even though it's uh, it's quite old, but we still maintain it. We still do calibration. It still can usable la, when conduct uh, this kind of research. La. Okay, we are, we are wheel tracking equipment and others. Uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are these some others, ovens, uh, the, the machineries and the uh, instrument that we have in our uh, traffic labs, uh, sorry, highway labs. But for our traffic, we also have another traffic lab. But in traffic lab, we do not have this machine because for traffic, we only, you know, uh, just we need to have a 
modeling software, simulation software, and do the analysis. And then in our in our traffic lab, we also we have a uh, bicycles lah. Okay, but now it's because no no student in the in the campus, so that's why we have uh, store all the these uh, bicycles in our lab. But actually, uh, we plan to have uh, this kind of the bike rental service lah, to be offered to our students, where actually we have about ten or to twelve bikes in our lab. So, but uh, I think in our next plan, we will still will offer for the bike rental service. Hope then, you know, to encourage this kind of active transport, like cycling and uh, uh, walking in the campus area. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, our research activities. So what we have done and what we are doing now. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, the ongoing research. So actually, uh, this one is uh, we apply this uh, this grant as a team uh, because this is not an individual lecturer. So like for this FRGS, actually uh, we have uh, four or five of our research center members. Actually, the uh, combat effort join as a team and together we bid for the, this uh, FRGS project. So this is a critical study on the development of the sustainable transport using the big data under the FRGS. And at the same time, also we do some kind of, uh, you know, uh, community service that this one is a grant uh, offered by the UMKS uh, program, Keselamatan General Raya Secha Interactive. So this is a interactive uh, road safety program. Actually, uh, our, we have uh, five participants schools in this program, uh, five uh, secondary schools. Uh, actually, we want to uh, form a uh, uh, road safety uh, club in the in the schools and through the activities uh, organized by these clubs hope that we can uh, create the awareness and also share the safe road safety tips with our uh, school children so in order for them you know uh, to reduce the uh, accident happens better amongst our students in the secondary school and also uh, we managed to secure the IRG grant from the research cluster. So this is to promote the active transport. As I said just now, active transport means uh, uh, we go to one place using the physical activities like walking and cycling. So this is one we want to see that how, how the way we can create this kind of the, you know, the impact and how we can encourage people to go and to walk and to cycle more. OK, and the, the final one, this one is the Erasmus Plus program. This is one we managed to secure uh, together with our European partner that we want to develop the master curriculum uh, in Asia's uh, university in the traffic safety. OK, this is what I'm doing now. Actually, it's a uh, pressure uh, because we have a very short time frame and we need to do a lot of the documentation and submit to the KPT and because UM is one of the, the member in this consortium, that means that we have to offer master program in traffic safety. Uh, in UM, I think the we have the set the deadline is uh, maybe uh, by end of next year that we have to offer this special program. But now actually we we develop this program, the curriculum, the the content, the syllabus, everything together with our European partner and also some Asian partner uh, in Asia country. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, we also have consultancy service, uh, consultancy work. So here we have, uh, you know, just managed to get a job from the Jabata Audit Negara on the study on the sustainable transport, uh, on the public transport uh, projects lah, in Klang Valley because, uh, you know, the Audit Negara, they have want to audit whether this project is uh, okay or not, uh, on par or not, how, how is the performance. So then we are, as the consultant, we have to work together with Jabata Audit Negara to audit the public transport projects in Klang Valley. And of course, uh, uh, my, my colleagues, my other team members also managed to secure a trip generation study uh, from the uh, Highway Planning Division from the Ministry of uh, Work. OK, so this is also one of the study in uh, a major study uh, in the in the tra transportation because we are, this this manual is very important for us for the traffic engineer. When we have a new development, we need to predict how much is the cars able to generate or attract to that particular uh, uh, development uh, projects. So that's why from there we have to plan on how are we going to improve the traffic system in that area. OK, uh, uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are our previous research work that we have done. So pre previously we have managed to get a grant from the KPT uh, on the COVID-19 study. So we want to develop develop a guideline, a public transport management guideline for the uh, post-COVID-19, where actually the, the SOP like generally. So in the in the COVID-19, so what we should do, what are the actions, what are the prevention measures, what is the SOP that they should follow, not only for the uh, uh, for the transport operator and also for the uh, passengers. 
the, the root users also. And also we have a, before that we have a, a work project with the Uber on the e-hailing as, as the last mile and first and last mile mode of transport. So before the Uber actually uh, retired from our Malaysian market. And then we also have a, 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 a few studies with the SPAD on the sub, uh, express bus supply and demand uh, uh, study and also with the MPPJ on the uh, free, uh, free bus uh, service the on on the what we call that the the users uh, satisfactory studies uh. okay thank you next time please yeah we have also uh, yeah SPADs, the projects and also we have another uh, research on the review pro projects with Asia uh, from the transport policy study in Japan and also we have uh, two others project with the MPBJ uh, because MPBJ is you know we are in in the even though we are from the uh, from the KL because we are next to MPBJ so we have uh, uh, managed to get some projects uh, from the MPBJ thank you uh, next slide please yeah, we have uh, others, uh, what we call that, we co-organized uh, this uh, Malaysian University Transport Research Forum conference in 2018. So this is one of the biggest uh, research conference in uh, national research conference in the transport uh, discipline. Okay, and also this uh, is uh, uh, the, the photos on uh, where we have uh, the meeting with the uh, uh, principals and also the school representative for our uh, UM case projects. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, of course, uh, we have uh, with the uh, with our current research grant. Also, we actually uh, actively be uh, contacted and also we sit to other stakeholders like uh, DPKL and also we have uh, this, uh, this kind of discussion with the, the BEAM, uh, e -bike, uh, one of the e-bike service provider from Singapore that they want to seek for possibility that they want to, uh, you know, uh, have their uh, e-bike render service here in, in, in UM campus. Lah. And also since we would say that we want to promote this kind of active transport, so that's why we also invite those uh, professional cyclists, you know, uh, this uh, Miss Irina to have a safe tips, lah, safe cycling tips in the cities uh, with our students and also with our, uh, what we call that, uh, audience here in UM. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, also we received, uh, we have also organized uh, uh, modeling seminars uh, by the INRO. We have two speakers from Canada who have uh, have this uh, INRO, uh, what we call a training workshop in UM. And also we received uh, uh, visiting uh, uh, professors from uh, from uh, China University uh, that we uh, discussed on the possible collaboration with them. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, because due to the COVID uh, since last year, so we cannot have a physical activity. So that's why we have a various webinars. Lah, OK, uh, web webinars talk on the different uh, topics. OK, like we have, uh, you know, root safety webinars and also we have a bridge engineering design because bridge engineering is uh, even though it's a structures, but because of the roots uh, projects, also we have, you know, you have to do a lot of the, this bridge engineering design, things like that. So that's why we invite the expert here to give the talk on this topic. And also we do, we, we won't forget our postgraduate students. So that's that's why we invite expert giving the, the 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 talk on the research management tools and how to 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 patent their works things like that. Okay, so this is what we did uh, from since the early uh, last year, uh, since the uh, the outbreak of the pandemic. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, about the networking. So what we have uh, the company that we work together and we collaborate locally and abroad. Uh, next slide, please. So here are the some of the collaborators. So we have uh, signed uh, the MOU with some of the uh, companies here, like Sina Traffic System, one of the biggest, uh, uh, what we call that, uh, company who manage and control the the intersections, the signals intersections, junctions in KL. So I think they they control about maybe more than uh, one thousand intersections here in KL. Okay, Jetty Mix, another MOU we we signed with this Jetty Mix, uh, the premix uh, manufacturers, and also the we have a uh, uh, various uh, collaboration work with the DPKL, uh, MPPJs, Ministry of Transport. Definitely, because we are we are the transport uh, research center, so definitely we have to work closely with the Ministry of Transport, uh, APAD. Yeah, before that is SPAD, and so uh, for others uh, companies as listed, listed here. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, we also have the collaborators uh, works together with Eastern Asia Society for Transportation Studies. So this is one of the biggest uh, societies. Uh, transport societies lah, in Asia. So the it, the HQ is in Japan, but uh, every once in every two years they will organize uh, the biggest uh, conference lah, in the Asia country. So uh, for your information, actually uh, Malaysia will be the next host lah, in 2023. Uh, but 
of course, uh, they will lead by my and other colleagues from others uh, university, but we will work together hope, uh, with, with, with her and to organize the, the coming uh, East Conference. Lah. And also we have uh, cities for mobility stu uh, from Stutt uh, Stutt Stuttgart, Germany, and also some uh, 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 Institute of Transport Star Policy Study from Japan and also another uh, laboratory from the Saharan regions. OK, uh, thank you. Next slide, please. OK, so I think that's all from me today and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Pass to you uh, back to, to you, uh, Prof. Nora. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chun. Uh, uh, the you mentioned war. That was uh, a, a very interesting uh, overview of the work that your research center do, especially on transportation research. Um, next, I would like to invite the next speaker. We have Dr. Jamila Mohammad. She is the head for UM Malaysia Research, UM Malaysia Japan Research Center, and. Um, uh, Dr. Jamila is a lecturer in a special Japanese preparatory, uh, preparatory program, Center for Foundation Studies in Science. She is also the head of Malaysia Japan Research Center, MGRC. She graduated from University of uh, Tsukuba and Nagoya University, Japan, and her research skills are in the field of Japanese language education, Japanese language and culture, discourse analysis, linguistic blindness, second language acquisition, as well as Malaysia Look East policy. She joined UM in 1997 and has contributed a huge amount of work to the Japanese language education in Malaysia. She also has written two Japanese language textbooks for Ministry of Education Malaysia, and these textbooks are used by our Form 4 and Form Form 5 students in our national schools. And uh, in 2016, she was also awarded the Nagoya University Award for contributions to international exchange. So over to you, Dr. Jamila. Dr. Jamila, you're still muted. You <laughs> might want to so, unmute yourself first. So thank you, uh, Prof. Jefferson. Uh, firstly, I would like to try to upload my um, Slides, yeah. Can we try? Can you see my slides? Huh? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Good morning. And in Japanese, Ohayo gozaimas. Okay, um, firstly, I would like to thank the Research Cluster Office of University Malaya for giving me the opportunity to talk about Malaysia Japan Research Center or MJRC. I am Jamila, uh, as introduced by Prof just now. Um, I teach Japanese um, at Ambang Asuhan Jepun, Pusat Asasi Science, and I also teach a subject of Jati Diri at the Center for Foundation Studies in Science or Pusa Asasi Science. And I was appointed as the head of MJRC from March this year. Um, so I am still new and in the process of building up MJRC. Well, um, before I proceed, okay, um, let me share the, sorry. Okay, so before I proceed, I would like to, tell where MJRC stands in relation to the research clusters in UM. Uh, MJRC is under UMNSRC or uh, UC Malaya North South Research Center. And um, this center now is uh, led by uh, Prof Associate Professor Dr. Baskaran Angatevar. Yeah, and um, on top of UMNSRC, uh, is Social Advancement and Happiness Research Cluster led by Professor Dr. Stephanie Shamila Pillai. And we are all under Prof. Dr. Nosa Adah Binti Abdurrahman, uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation of UM. Okay, and we are situated on the 19th floor of Wisma RND UM. Okay, um, this is the uh, organization chart of MJRC, and as you can see, MJRC has 31 members. 
32, including me, uh, coming from various faculties in UM. It's not stated here. Uh, I'm sure there are familiar names yeah, here to you. Uh, and uh, they are all from various faculties and centers in UM. Uh, for example, such as uh, from Pusat Asasi Science, Faculty Bahasa dan Linguistik, Institute Asia Eropa, Faculty Sastra dan Sains Social, uh, Faculty Alam Benda, Faculty Ekonomi dan Pentadbiran, Faculty Kejuruteraan, um, Faculty Pergigian, Faculty Perniagaan dan Perkenalan. Perkenalan, I believe is the change. The name has already changed now. I'm sorry. And Faculty Perubatan, Faculty Sains, Computer, Teknologi Maklumat, uh, and Faculty Sains. So we have um, many uh, expertise here. Okay, uh, up to now, I have had two meetings with them. Uh, on the 25th of June, I've invite, invited all academics um, from UM who graduated from Japanese universities or who are interested in MGRC to an online meeting to discuss possible collaborations with MGRC. The meeting was attended by uh, about 50 academic staffs and about half of them became MJRC's new members. And uh, then on 17 September, which was last Friday, I had an online meeting with um, M this time only MJRC members uh, yeah, who have signed up as members to discuss further collaborations in MJRC. In the meeting, I asked all members to form groups of three to five persons, and these groups are uh, preferably multidisciplinary based and have to work for grants, publications, as well as patents. We are still welcoming those who are interested to become members of MJRC, and please feel free to contact us if you are interested. OK, uh, let me explain on the uh, establishment of MGRC. Uh, actually, MGRC was founded in 2012 by Associate Professor Dr. Mat Nasruddin Mat Ahe when he was the Executive Director of Asia Europe Institute, UM. In the early days of its establishment, MGRC had collaborated closely with Asia Europe Institute Japan Studies Program or GSP and Malaysian Association of Japanese Studies or MAJAS, where MGRC often organize activities that are related to Japan. And MGRC was established to promote academic exchange and mutual understanding between Malaysia and Japan. And I would like to share one good news. On the 29th of April 2021, uh, Dr. Mat Nasruddin was honored with the Order of the Rising Sun Gold Race with Rosette Award for his outstanding contributions to promote academic exchange and mutual understanding between Malaysia and Japan. And we are in MGRC. It's very proud of Dr. Mat Nasruddin for this great achievement. Congratulations. Okay, uh, the vision of MGRC is to be a reference center for Malaysia-Japan relations and the mission is to promote research and consultancy that can be shared among institutions of higher education in Malaysia as well as in Japan. Okay, our objectives, uh, there are three objectives of uh, MGRC. One is to combine scholars from various fields and expertise in relation to Malaysia and Japan. Second one is to meet and exchange views thoughts and opinions with Japanese institutions. And the third one is to disseminate information on Malaysia-Japan relations. Well, Next. Uh, Next, I would like to update on activities by MJRC. Uh, due to the time constraint, I will read on the latest achievements until 2019. But you can refer to our website for more details. OK, um, as you can see here, um, we have webinar, regime change and Malaysia-Japan relations, explaining shifts and continuity in foreign policy by Dr. Gita Govindasamy uh, on, the 9th, on the 17th December 2020. 
Then uh, we have webinar, another case of look is policy, Malaysia responses towards China's and Japan's infrastructure investment and economic arrangements. And speaker uh, was Dr. Muhammad Daniel Azman, also on the 17th December of 2020. And then later um, we had Soka University and University of Malaya seminar, special lecture by Associate Professor Dr. Nasruddin Mat Ahi and the title was Malaysia-Japan Relations from, nine, from 1870s to 2020 and this was on March 4th, March of 2020. Then we also had public lecture, a case study on of grant assistance for human security project in Sabah uh, 2000 to 2015 by Dr. Ramli Dola on 18th February 2020. Uh, we had public lecture MGRC from Embassy of Japan, uh, the Indo-Pacific strategy in Japan, and speakers. Uh, okay, uh, speaker was uh, His Excellency Professor Satoshi Morimoto, Chancellor of Takushoku University and former Minister of Defense Japan, and the date was on the 11th December 2019. And we had public lecture, the role of Malaysia in the globalization of Japanese language education in Asian region. The speaker was Dr. Z Dr. Zaid Muhammad Zain, and the date was on the 19th October 2019. And we had conference on new dimension of Malaysia education towards strengthening personality based on Japanese experiences. And paper presenters were uh, Dr. Mat Nasruddin, Dr. Rahayati Paidi, Dr. Asmadi, and Dr. Muhammad Daniel Azman. And it was on 25th February 2019. We had workshop uh, on Japan, Japanese studies through a Southeast Asian lens workshop uh, from 22nd to 24th May 2019. And the venue was in Hawaii University. And uh, again, with Soka University and University of Malaya Seminar, we had special lecture by uh, Dr. Mat Nasruddin and the title was From Medieval Malacca Ryukyu Connection to Malaysia-Japan Relations on the 1st March of 2019. Okay, um, next I would like to highlight MJRC ac activities for this year. Uh, from January to December throughout the year, actually this is from uh, last year. Uh, this is actually continued from last year. Uh, MJRC has IIRG grant for about 30,000 ringgit and the title is about commodifying tourism, rural industries, history and SME development. And in March, um, we had webinar uh, Japan after World War uh, by Associate Professor Dr. Nasruddin uh, Prof. Akihiko Tanaka, Dr. Junichi Yamada, and Dr. Gita Govindasami on 25th of March 2021. And then, okay, okay, uh, from April to present, uh, to present, uh, I was working closely with the Japan Embassy for the application of the grant assistance for cultural grassroots projects of Japan. And uh, now we are already in the final stage. The amount of this run is about uh, 300,000 ringgit, but uh, this is for equipping MGRC with facilities only and cannot be used to fund research or hire researchers. Uh, if everything goes smoothly, most likely MGRC will receive this grant by next March. Okay, and uh, in June, we had this first discussion on collaboration with MJRC, and in July, we had established our homepage, and uh, MJRC uh, homepage is inside UMNSRC homepage, and uh, the link is as shown here. And uh, on the 24th, uh, sorry, on the 28th August, I became the panelist for the forum. Japanization, the influence of Japanese culture in internationalization, language and ethics. And uh, this forum was organized by Global Network Club, uh, a student club yeah, uh, in Faculty of Art and Social Science in the University of Malaya. 
Okay, and in September, uh, here I am <laughs> representing uh, MJRC for this uh, sharing session in University Malaya Center of Research Sharing Session Series 3, 2021. And then uh, MJRC is also collaborating with Yoshinoya Holdings Company from Japan. I believe uh, many of you know Yoshinoya and uh, Beef Bowl or Udon, yeah, Hanamaru, the same company actually. And we uh, had come to uh, where we will conduct special food service industry course for seven times, starting from uh, 6 November until 18 December. And this course is open for around 200 people, um, mainly students from UM and members of MJRC. I would also like to open some seats to students from other universities in Malaysia for the interest of networking. And uh, in December, uh, I plan to conduct forums in conjunction with the pre-celebration of the uh, 40th anniversary of the Look East policy. Okay, I believe MJRC has many potential to be explored, uh, such as in research collaborations, conducting courses, workshops and programs, translation and consultancy services and others. And uh, I have um, two keywords to help me run MGRC, which are network and output. So the first keyword, network, means networking inside UM and outside UM, including overseas, especially with Japan. And networking inside UM uh, is basically among members of MGRC, and at present, the membership is limited to UM staff only. The members are from different faculties in UM, as I mentioned earlier, enabling MGRC to have interdisciplinary expertise, which uh, will benefit all of us tremendously. Okay, um, for networking outside UM, MGRC is working closely with the Japan Embassy, the Japan Foundation Kuala Lumpur and JICA. And we will also collaborate with University of Scuba Japan that will set up their branch in Malaysia soon. And it happened to be who we are will be in the same building in uh, R&D complex. Actually, I am the alumni of University of Scuba, as uh, Prof mentioned in the introduction. Uh, and I am really looking forward to collaborate with my alma mater. Other than that, MGRC is also collaborating with Oceania Holdings, as I mentioned earlier, to conduct Oceania Special Food Service Industry courses uh, from November to de December, and uh, we will expand more yeah, in collaborating uh, with others. And uh, the second one is output. Output means the results of networking and collaborations in forms of publications, grants, patents, forums, seminars, programs, events, etc. Uh, I believe with more members to calibrate actively, MGRC will be more visible and will be able to make more achievements. Uh, I think I will stop here. My team and I will work towards achieving objectives, mission and mission of MGRC and become the bridge of Malaysia and Japan. I also wish MGRC to become a Malaysia-Japan prominent research and culture center, not only in UM but also in Malaysia. Thank you so much. Kosecho, arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, Dr. Jamila. It's indeed um, very interesting to hear the achievements and congrats on the current, the future grant that you are getting, as well as all the other activities that uh, you have mentioned just now. In fact, in this forum itself, um, uh, Dr. Yuan Chung Chunua of Pro Center of Transportation. Uh, what I can see is Japan is very famous for their their bullet trains, and also <laughs> this could also be a real platform to network. Like you said, the two keywords network as well as output. Right. Thank you to all the speakers uh, for such a great presentation and uh, hearing the things that all of you have been doing. I would now like to open the session to Q&A. So if there are any questions from the public, uh, you may just raise your hand or you know start talking, um, just unmute yourself and then ask the question. Yes, Prof Saiful. 
Question. Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Oh, ayo kezai mas. Oh, ayo kezai mas. Okay. Just a, a general question. What, not a question. Like it's more like uh, uh, trying to to get your opinion on this. I mean, uh, we know that you have academics doing fantastic research, as uh, evidenced by what you have stated just now about your various centres and all that. Uh, but our biggest challenge, I think, is in engaging the uh, stakeholders. I see that some of you have done some great job uh, engaging the stakeholders. But it's not just about engaging the stakeholders, but also getting them to accept our data and to implement good policies with our data. For example, for the uh, uh, traffic uh, center just now, we know that this is the data with that. But at the moment, we are still facing, uh, well, traffic issues. So I'm wondering, uh, what can we do? What would you suggest that we do to get these people to actually listen, the stakeholders to listen and actually really use our data uh, for the benefit of society? Because I think uh, at the end of the day, that's the objective of the university, isn't it? To, uh, to make things better with knowledge that we have obtained through our research. So perhaps comments from everyone? Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for the question, Prof. Yeah, yeah, of course, because the thing is, we we uh, we have a um, meeting and we engage, you know, we approach uh, DPKR and BPJs. Okay, so we want to know that what they want us to do because we we can't like simply like doing our research and just sell that. Oh, this is what we do. You must accept it. No, not like that. So before that, we already have approached, you know, DPKL. We see their IT centers, things like that, and then uh, you know, but it seems like they they don't really like. They, they seems like they don't need we, us from academic here. They, they say they seem like I don't need R and D. Why I need to do that? You know, so it's very hard to convince them. Frank speaking, because we have some uh, a numbers of uh, meeting with them. They say when we're talking about you know something to provide you know uh, something like uh, the facilities, good infra facilities design to promote active transport. When we approach the PKR, they say, oh, this is not under our department. You should refer to that. You know, we are like a ball and kicking here and there. This happened, even though we say that we are from the university, we are not actually uh, begging them to give us any money to, you know, to charge them for this, any consultation work. But actually, we want to go there, approach them, hope that, you know, in return, we can we can do something lah, for our community. But still, we, I think we, we need to work really work hard. You know, we put more efforts in this. Lah. So we, that, because through the IRG, actually, we have already have done some uh, prelim studies. And actually, we have already presented to our MB uh, from the Pandai Dalam, uh, Lembah Pandai, sorry, uh, YB uh, uh, Pami. And also, we have uh, approached our DPKL. I already have presented it. But when we come to DPKL, you know, they, they insist, oh, now uh, people are work from home. Why not you find another time in October, things like that, you know. We are still waiting the time, you know. We have already made appointment with them since April. But now they say, oh, April, now you already uh, 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 locked down. And then why not, you know, after the Hari Raya. After Hari Raya, we approach them again and say, you know. But of course, I think maybe uh, I think we have to, I have to think of a way and how to approach them maybe in a friendly way. So that, you know, they can accept at least meet us and then we we present our work and then in, in return we also have to ask uh, ask them uh, what the help we can offer lah. so things like that okay thank you prof thank you prof that was a very interesting question and uh answer was well by dr yuan i guess what you're saying is that the policy window the window is very short and how do you uh grab that window or how do you make the, the connections and making sure that people actually listen to whatever that you have and trying to make it into better policies true 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 um any other questions from the floor to the speakers i've got a question um i think my question is to uh, our second speaker from crystal uh prof saharudin are you still here Yes, bro. All right. Um, I was just wondering, you mentioned that uh, your center does a lot of uh, bioinformatics and, oh. and basically uh, measurements of the human Sorry, body, right? Sorry, oh. uh oh We've got loss in connection. Bro, are you back? Loss of connection. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can see you're frozen. Can you, can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah, can, can. Yeah, okay, great. Now, I was just, um, I, I remembered your slides, you mentioned about the measurements that you do in in the, in, in Crystal Labs. 
Yep. Right, especially the human measurements and how Uniqlo approached you uh, in terms of finding out what are the measurements of Malaysian uh, population, yep. I guess, in order for them to uh, to make sure that the sizes or the clothes that they do fits the population of interest. Yep. I was just wondering whether, what about mask fitting? Now we are in COVID-19 situation, right? So mask is also a very important uh, tool that we need. Uh, especially with our SOPs, even mm-hmm. though most of us are vaccinated, but having additional layers of protection is always good. And we've got various nose bridge. Some have flat nose like myself. Uh, <laughs> some would have it. <laughs> no. Me also. Okay, I, <laughs> generally, <laughs> general speaking, but some would have, uh, uh, you know, sharper nose. So I, I suppose facial measurements are also extremely important in past mass fitting uh, studies so have there been any uh, talks or any you know with any of the f- mass producers to work together with your your research center okay. so uh, in our research center we have uh, Prof Ame is doing on the body size uh, and the food Dr Arpa is doing a part of her research is on the Facial on the characteristic of the facial. I think, uh, I think she she have all the the measurement and everything, and then can contribute into uh, determine the, the the general size of a uh, Malaysian uh, facial features. So I think that can also be one of the thing that uh, uh, helps the the, the country. In order to provide a better protection, as uh, Prof mentioned, I agree with uh, what Prof mentioned uh, in this uh, part, lah. But usually, it depends on the industry whether they are interested or not. Like for example, uh, like the uh, my size uh, project after years of uh, doing that, and then suddenly uh, the industry. Uh, so our website and then based on that they contacted us maybe maybe in future we are looking forward to get uh, more collaboration from company and yes we are actively trying to provide uh, to provide our information uh, into the website and promoting the project that we are doing uh, we are promoting that and hopefully that that can be captured by the industry and then uh, do uh, a better collaboration with the uh, industry to uh, to make benefit of the data that we have. Thank you, Prof. Thanks, thanks. I think, yeah, um, maybe, you know, whatever that you have done with Uniqlo, you can duplicate that. I'm not sure whether it works with all types of <laughs> industries, but at least you've got some uh, addition or some uh, prototype or, you know, some examples of yes, things yes. that has happened before mm-hmm. and can be done again. Great, great, thank great work. Okay, thank right. you, Prof. Uh, uh, any questions from the floor? Anyone else have any questions? Is anyone raising their hands or shall I look at the uh, conversation if there's any questions? You can also type your questions in the chat box. Dr. Yuan is uh, raising hand, Prof. Oh yes, Dr. Yuan, yes. Yes, yes, Prof. Yeah, I just want to ask uh, Dr. Jamila. So for your research centers, uh, is it uh, the, how can we join as a member or is it we have to be, you know, uh, someone who have went to Japan to study before that only we can eligible to join as a member or anyone, I mean, who are interested in me to, to seek for maybe collaborations, opportunities with uh, our, you know, uh, academician from Japan. So can we join uh, to your member as a, uh, to your center as a member? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yuan, for showing interest in our center. Actually, I'm also interested in your center, so in your center also. And I would like to say hi to Dr. Saharuddin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it's been a while. Okay, so um, I'm sorry if my memories, uh, I mean, like faded away. But actually, um, I think in 2015, I was the secretariat for this Honda um leadership program right and uh, the transport uh, uh things came and we had uh you know programs with japan the uh, in in uh, the honda company that i i, I went there in i forgot maybe in me yeah prefecture and uh, i could see that we could collaborate and uh, the one that Dr. Yuan uh, mentioned just now was really interesting 
and actually in in Japan they teach children about the traffic and these things since they were in kindergarten you know um, I gave birth to my uh, daughter in Japan and sent her to uh, kindergarten for about uh, six years so I could see how they train their children and they teach these things that we we don't teach here in Malaysia and actually we can actually calibrate and uh, it's so easy to become a member of MJRC. I will uh, I'll give you the form later and just fill and uh, then let's calibrate. Thank you so okay. much. If you have okay, thank, thank you, you, thank you, you thank you. If yes. you have the link or if the if the forms are in uh, online, you know, soft copy version, you can just type it to the, our our link, our, our chat box and, you know. Okay. I will ask. Also, <laughs> the option. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I've got a question here in the chat box. Uh, this is for Dr. Prof. Rusdi. Prof. Rusdi, are you still there? Prof. Rusdi, calling once. Prof. Rusdi, you are muted. Any question for me? Yes, yes, there's one question here in the chat box. I'll just read up to you. Uh, the question is asking about, you mentioned in one of your slides that the center actually does fellowships, right? So um, the audience uh, is asking, how can, can we have a bit more um, can you elaborate a bit about the fellowships that you have? So, Prof. Rusty, are you there? Oh, we've lost connection. Have we lost connection with Prof. Rusty? Not yet, but we cannot hear you, Doctor. Oh, we still so can't get him. Not clear. I can't hear the. Oh, the you question. can't hear the question. Yeah, the question is on the fellowship. You mentioned oh, something about fellowships. Masih tak dengar? Hello. Ya, yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Hello, yes, yes. What is the question just now, Prof? Yeah, Sorry, the, Prof. it's on fellowship. Uh, you mentioned ada uh, fellowship di bawah uh, UMK. So I think uh, if you can just uh, elaborate a little bit more about the fellowships that you conduct. Okay, this, this fellowship program is uh, actually uh, the full uh, name of the program is a full ship in uh, fellowship in addition medicine. We uh, first started this project since year 2011. Uh, it's a two weeks uh, intensive program that includes uh, lectures and also practical aspects with regards to uh, addiction treatments. So the candidate were actually uh, enrolled into the program and they've been given uh, certificate upon the completion of two weeks uh, full intensive program and this project start from eight o'clock until 5 5 p.m in the evening lah. and uh, so far we have around i think more than hundreds uh, participants already uh, follow uh, this this program uh, from mainly from the middle east uh, countries as well as uh, um, as well as uh, uh, local local people lah. and and now we are in the process of making uh, 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 part of the program under UMC set right right okay okay oh, so so for for the uh, for for those who are interested in the coming ones we will wait for the announcement from UMC set am i right on the uh, fellowship uh, yeah from from UMCAS lah. Uh, oh, or okay. maybe from UMC set we are in the process still uh, at the moment, we, we do it uh, once or twice every, every year. Uh, in the past, it uh, used to be a six months program, and then uh, it become one month, and then the latest one, two weeks only. Uh, it become more, more, and more packed. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, to the, uh, 
I, I hope that that answers the question. Um, for Dr. Yuan, another question as well. Uh, you mentioned a, a lot about public transport just now, uh, making sure that uh, people move from individual, you know, single owner vehicle to using more of a public transport. Um, but we are also in the current COVID pandemic stage where one of the things that we realize in terms of mode of transmission is through airborne. Um, so um, how, how do you see that the public transport ventilation be better improved? especially in our local setting, our LRTs or MRTs. OK, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Noren. Thank you for your questions. So actually, uh, this one, uh, we have already have done uh, what we call that one studies like in our uh, the previous uh, that project that we managed to secure from the KPT. So actually, we have one uh, colleagues from the medical uh, departments. Actually, she has done on this uh, ventilations work. Stuff. So actually, uh, because as you know, like, you know, our train still is a confined space. And then, you know, a lot of the passengers actually packing in, 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 the, in the one coach and then it's really uh, they so the risk is there lah. So actually, uh, in our proposal, actually we suggest that you know we have a but the details I'm also also not sure I'm not an expert here. So they have to some kind of the, the system. So we have to refer some uh, maybe what have been practiced in the Japan's. So they are, they are the the whole the ventilation system inside the coach. So actually we we are not saying that we refer. Actually we just try to learn from them what are the this system. But of course uh, uh, this system we already have uh, put it in our proposal and already submit to the the minister of uh, what we call that higher up educations so uh, and also we have shared the similar uh, studies with uh, the, our projects or uh, the findings uh, with the the in uh, the what we call that the process runner but whether or not they accept this uh, we don't know whether they, they will accept our proposal here uh, but as uh, you mentioned that now is a pandemic so of course our uh, people that uh, they're still not uh, Confidence, the confidence is not there to use the public transport. Same as me, because now before that, I take the public transport to UM every day. But now, uh, since the, uh, the lockdown, and then now, even now, I tend to drive my own cars to, to UM campus, you know. Uh, I, I also, that is why I think uh, it takes time uh, for, for, for uh, the publics to, uh, you know, to have their confidence back to take a public transport. I think at least that uh, it, it may take up to six to uh, at least six months uh, for that. But uh, Besides that, I think uh, the government what can can do, uh, you know, like the the past pulanan, you know, this kind of things. Uh, I think this will help. This will help. Besides that, also we have to uh, uh, what we call to encourage more of this uh, uh, first and last mile connectivity that we promote these uh, others, you know, the feeders, the shuttle bus service, the things like that. When people are convenient to go from their house to their nearest train station and take the train to continue the the, the, the trip, and that is how the, the system should works uh. So that's how we can reduce the the number of cars on the route. So this is also how, what we are working hard on, on doing this. Uh. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Yeah, I guess it's the balance between uh, trying to make sure that you are also protected as well as trying to improve on the, uh, you know, the climate change and using less of your own. Yes, true. Uh, 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 even if I have to follow the SOP, uh, what the SOP is set by the, the Minister of Health. Uh. But of course, in our, uh, our study also, we have uh, proposed uh, some SOP that we refer to what others can have practices, the good practices that we should learn, we should adopt here, I think suitable for here, that we already have put in, in there. But as, as, I, as I mentioned, we already have presented it, submit, and even present to the, to the KPT. But whether or not there take this or maybe they have already have shared this finding with the mediums of transport uh we we don't know <laughs> we, are, we are not so sure whether they have done that, that okay thank you prof thanks 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 for doing the research and thanks for sharing it with kpt hopefully they pick up the uh like you said the good practices from other parts of the world um in particular you did mention japan so <laughs> i'm wondering dr jamila you know any any <laughs> uh, are you aware of any good practices in terms of uh, ventilation transport in japan <laughs> okay, um, well, I remember when I first uh, went to Japan in 1992, uh, I was surprised to see many Japanese wearing masks. So during that time, I thought they were dentists. <laughs> I was so young at that time, I was so naive. And then later that I, uh, I got to know that um, they are wearing masks whenever they feel uh, not healthy. So not only to protect themselves, but also to protect others from getting the flu. So I guess uh, Japan already has very good practice in this long before COVID <laughs> exists. So and the children were uh, 
he uh, were taught to wash their hands properly, not just washing hands, but they, you know, um, there's a proper way to wash hands. And um, so, well, uh, regarding ventilation, I doubt because uh, most, I mean, there are many subways, yeah? <laughs> so for that, I'm not sure about the ventilation, but uh, I think during this pandemic, surely Japan take precautions on that. Maybe they, you know, um, uh, I, I don't know, maybe they, they have precautions for that. But uh, Japanese people, they are taking care of themselves. They have their self-responsibility, which I think very important. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jamila. Yeah, I think, uh, you, you're, you're right. Uh, in terms, I mean, the the actions that you take is also a behavior change on yourself. So yes. it, it starts off with you. And yes. if you don't feel well, then, you know, the things that you have to do in order to protect right. yourself as well as the community. So that, that plays yes. a very important role. Thank right. you. Um, can I ask if there's any questions from the floor? Uh, I, I would like to um, add that I have shared the link to be a member uh, of MGRC. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jimali. Yes, I can see that. Yeah, for those who are interested in joining the uh, membership, the link is here in the chat box. So do have a look at the chat box. Oh, and uh, uh, Prof. Rusty also has put up some information on the fellowship in addiction, a two weeks intensive program open uh, those who intend to work in addiction treatment. So if you need further details, just uh, drop him by email. Right. Is there any more questions from the floor? Yana, is there any questions that you receive from your side? No, no Prof. Oh, OK, so I think that that was a great session that we had uh, this morning. Maybe uh, let's go around the, well, if we have a table or a panel that will be on the stage right now, but <laughs> since we are online, uh, maybe I'll just ask uh, the last words from each one of the panel, every one of the panel. So maybe we start with uh, Prof. Rusdi. Anything you want to say? Uh, thank you, Prof. Noran. Uh, again, I, I would like to take opportunity for those who wanted to make a collaboration with UMCAS, you can just email me or the email that I mentioned just now, rusdi at ummt.edu.my. So we are happy to, to collaborate with uh, centers here, uh, especially uh, project or research that can uh, benefit uh, this uh, marginalized society, uh, drug addictions and so on. Um, I would like to invite you all also, please visit uh, Rumah Sinakase Kuala Lumpur, just adjacent to uh, uh, this, uh, what we call uh, Nine College, eh? Nine College, uh, to see what are the projects that have been going on. And and please support this this marginalized society by washing your car or polish your car or buy some of the products that they sell there. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Rusty. Yeah, inshallah, we'll send all our cars there. <laughs> for watching and uh, supporting the, the the work that you do. Thank you, Prof. Rusty from uh, University of Malaya Center for Addiction Science Studies, UMCAS. Um, next, uh, Prof. Saharuddin Muhammad, if you have any any words that you would like uh, to say. Thank you, Prof. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the research cluster for giving uh, Crystal this opportunity uh, to present uh, the information about Crystal. Uh, Prof. Saifu and the team, and also Prof. Noran for uh, a wonderful session. Uh, thank you very much. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Sarudin. We really love your abbreviation, Crystal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even though with the new new name, but it's also still Crystal. So that's really wonderful, really lovely. Thank you. Thank um, you. Oh, Dr. Yuan is still on the phone. Maybe I'll ask, I'll invite Dr. Jamila if you have any words to share with us. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Dr. Noran. Um, uh, thank you so much, firstly, for your kind uh, uh, way of uh, chairing this session, which made me comfortable. I was so worried and nervous <laughs> in talking about MGRC. And uh, again, I would like to thank the research class, the Office of Insimulaya, for giving me this chance uh, to talk 
or maybe to introduce uh, MJRC uh, to the members of Finns Team Laya and uh, others who had participated. Um, well, um, I am positive in, <laughs> now we are worried to say positive, <laughs> I am positive that MJRC will strive uh, in the future. And uh, for that, I cannot do it alone. And uh, we need more people to come in and to collaborate and uh, have, um, and I also want to work, um, uh, I mean, happily, not under pressure. I know uh, we have KPI to achieve, to achieve, but at the same time, uh, I hope that we could uh, work happily and, uh, you know, uh, at, and at the same time, also achieve uh, something important and could benefit others. And um, uh, I welcome again, uh, whoever are interested to participate and to become members of MGRC and let's work together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jamila. We look forward for positive work and uh, <laughs> you know all the wonderful work that is going to come out from the center. I yeah. think uh, Prof. Yuan, I can see he's still on the phone. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we would like to do is actually to have a, uh, a photo session. So if everyone can put up their videos on their videos and uh, let's have a photo session, everyone. coming up. Okay, is everyone ready? One, two, three, smile. One more. One, two, three. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Yana. Again, thank you so much to everyone who's been attending since morning. Um, on behalf of the Health and Wellbeing Research Cluster and Clus Research Cluster Office, we would like to thank all of you for your attention since uh, this morning. And we hope to see you in more of our sessions because we have uh, a few more, many more uh, sessions from the Research uh, Cluster Office. So do uh, have a look at your at our announcement and do join us in all our activities. Thank you so much to for the four speakers. You guys are doing tremendous great work. Keep it up. Let's stay positive and yeah, let's have good mental health as well. So take care. Stay safe, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Thank you.